Safranito is a light dexterity game for two to four players with a bit of a very simple economic system built in. All players are chefs buying and selling spices as they seek to complete their signature spice blends. For some odd reason, at this particular spice booth, this is all done by tossing roasted bread chips, represented in this game by weighted poker chips. This game is a race. The first player to complete three spice blends immediately ends the game and is declared the winner. Safranito is played with a board, poker chips, cards, paper money, and a plastic pepper mill piece. There are two sizes of cards in Safranito. Both are very simple. The small spice cards each depict one of the nine spices for sale in the game. You will be collecting these to turn in to complete the three spice blends you need to win. The large spice blend cards each depict a set of three spices. Turn in spice cards for those three spices at once and you get to take the completed spice blend card. Each spice blend card you complete takes you one third of the way to winning the game. Safranito's board can be split into three portions. The outer rail is a slightly raised portion of the board. It serves three purposes during the game. Helping to keep the chips from sliding off, helping players judge whether a throw is valid, and displaying the available spice cards. It is possible to make bank shots off of the rail, but it is very difficult. The rail isn't raised much more than half the thickness of a poker chip, so it's very easy to skip over the barrier. Inside the rail, there are arrayed nine spice bowls, cardamom, peppers, garlic, ginger, saffron, mint, curry powder, cumin, and cinnamon. These bowls are all functionally the same. The only difference between them is the spice card they let you buy or sell. Finally, there is a ring of smaller special action spaces arrayed around the saffron bowl in the center. Each has a different special power that up to one player can use each round. These must be resolved in the following order, starting from the bottom right. Extra throw. Resolved after all chips are thrown, this lets the player who controls it throw an additional chip. Extra spice card. The player who controls this space can blind draw as many spice cards from the pile as the value on the chip that gave them the space. They then select only one of those cards to keep. Reserved Spice Blend. The player who controls this space blind draws the top card of the Spice Blend deck. They keep it secret as a blend that only they can complete. When they do so, it is revealed to the other players and added to their total towards the three blends needed to win. The Head Chef. The player who controls this space takes the pepper mill and becomes the new head chef, disrupting the pepper mill's normal path around the board. The game comes with four sets of chips, one color for each potential player. Each set contains six chips with values in tens from 10 to 60 printed on one side. Each chip has a small hole bored through the exact center which is used to judge whether a chip is in or out of a given zone. The pepper mill serves the same role of designating the start player as in many other games. However, in Safranito, it has the potential to be much more powerful. The player holding the pepper mill, called the head chef, does get to throw their first chip first to start the round. However, far more importantly, they determine the order in which the spice bowls are resolved. In most turns, this will probably be inconsequential. In some turns, it can be a very big deal. The head chef can first pick bowls where they want to sell, and then bowls where they want to buy once they have the money. Or they can select things in an order to mess up their opponents. This is how you set up a game of Safranito. Each player receives all six chips of their chosen color, plus 200 rupees. The player who has cooked most recently 
gets the Pepper Grinder. Both the Spice Card deck and the Spice Blend deck are shuffled. The number of Spice Cards and Spice Blends that are available varies with the number of players. The same is true of the number of chips thrown each round. Here's the breakdown. A number of the top cards from the Spice Blend deck, based on the number of players, are turned over for all to see. These are the blends available for players to complete in the first round. A number of the top cards from the Spice deck, based on the number of players, are turned over and placed on their designated layout spaces. These are the only cards that will be available for purchase in the first round. A round of Saffronito is broken up into four phases. Throwing chips, evaluating chips, putting together spice blends, and prepping the board for the next turn. When it's your turn, you pick one of your chips and toss it onto the board in whatever way you want. There are only two rules. Number one, your hand must not pass over the board's rail while throwing chips. Number two, any chips landing on or over the rail are removed from the game until the next round. It is recommended, as a point of strategy, that you always throw chips with the numbers facing down, so your opponents don't know what numbers you're putting where on the board. However, if your chip lands numbers up, it's still a valid throw. For a chip to be considered in a bowl or action spot, the circle you're trying to land within must be visible through the hole in the middle of the chip. Even if you can only see some of the rim, which is black on action spaces, or gold on spice bowls, the chip is considered in. Once all the chips allowed for the round are thrown, the next step is to evaluate and activate any chips on action spaces. Only one player can activate each space. In the case of multiple chips being in a space, the player with the highest total numerical value wins that action. As I mentioned before, the spaces are always resolved in this order. Extra throw, additional spice card, reserving spice blends, and head chef. Next, the spice bowls are resolved one at a time in an order dictated by the head chef. Each bowl is resolved completely before moving on to the next. Here's what happens with each spice bowl. First, all chips on a given bowl are turned up to reveal their numerical values. Then we move on to selling. All players holding cards for that spice, regardless of whether they have chips in the bowl, can choose to sell those cards if they wish. The payment they receive for each card is set by the total value of all chips in the bowl. Any players who sell and do have chips in the bowl then remove their chips before play passes to the buying phase. Players cannot sell, then buy, the same spice in the same round. Cards sold during this step are sold to the supply and players are paid from the supply. No player-to-player -player sales are ever allowed, and the sold cards go to a discard pile rather than the board rail. Next, we move on to buying. Players who still have their chips in the bowl can now choose whether they want to buy that spice. The player with the highest displayed value on their remaining chips goes first. If they want to buy a card, they pay the total value their chips have displaying. So having a high chip in the bowl makes you more likely to be able to buy while there are still cards. However, you'll pay more for the privilege. Once that player either buys a card or passes, they remove their highest value chip from the bowl and the opportunity, if any cards still remain, passes to the player with the next highest. Because you only remove one chip, it is possible to have multiple chances to buy at lower and lower prices. If at any point there are no more cards for that spice on the rail, the bowl is resolved and all players with remaining chips there take them back without a chance to buy. 
The head chef then dictates the next spice bowl to be resolved. Whenever there are chips of equal value competing for action spaces or spice cards, the tie is resolved as follows. The player sitting closest to the head chef in clockwise order wins the tie. Though the manual is unclear, it has been established on BoardGameGeek that if the head chef is one of the players involved in the tie, they win that tie. Once all buying and selling of spices has been resolved, players have an opportunity to trade in their spice cards to collect one of the spice blends on offer. Each player gets an opportunity in turn, starting with the head chef and continuing in clockwise order from there. Each player can complete a maximum of one spice blend card per round. That includes any reserved spice blends they might be holding. The display of completable spice blend cards is not renewed until after this phase, so when they're gone, they're gone. After spice blends are dealt with, players get ready for the next round. The pepper mill passes to the left, the spice blend offer is refilled, and additional spice cards are added to the rail, the same number drawn at the beginning of the game, according to the player number chart. Play continues in this manner, round after round, until one player completes a total of three spice blends and immediately becomes the winner. You now know how to play Safranito. Leave any questions you have in the comments below, and I'll do my best to answer them. Have fun! If you could do me a small favor and click the like button below the video, that'll encourage me and help other people find it. If you subscribe to the channel, you'll get notifications when new fun stuff hits it. It's illegal to watch videos while driving, so you should subscribe to our podcast instead. Check out Dice and Dachshunds on iTunes, Podbean, or BoardGameGeek.